Okay, bro. Selamat pagi tuan-tuan dan puan-puan and happy good morning to ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Asia E webinar series. Uh, today we are celebrating our Teachers Day. So we have uh, the title Teachers are the Pillars of the School Success. Sidney Hook once said, everyone who remembers his own education remembers teachers, not methods or and techniques. The teachers is the heart of education system. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk also emphasized that a good teacher is like a candle. It consumes itself to light the way for others. Summing the two great thoughts, a teacher is one who has and shall tirelessly and unselfishly plant the seed of knowledge, sprinkle them with love, and patiently nurture their growth to produce tomorrow's dreams. In honoring these dedicated and caring teachers, the Malaysian Ministry of Education has aptly dedicated the theme of Teachers' Day for 2022, as teachers are the pillars of the school success. The unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic has shown us how dedicated teachers are in providing the best for their students, whether they are teaching them in person or remotely. Henceforth, World Teachers' Day 2022 focused on the theme, Teachers are the heart of education recovery, highlighting the tirelessness of teachers even during COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns. In expressing our appreciation to these teachers and in conjunction with Teachers' Day, Asia E University dedicates this webinar to our unsung heroes and heroines. Today, we have a panel of three award-winning teachers that have made the nation proud and will share the knowledge and experiences on how to be an outstanding teacher. Let me welcome teacher Muhammad Al Khalifa bin Muhammad Adnan. Uh, by the way, in the local language, teachers is called Chegu. So I will also dress him or the, the panel as Chegu. Winners for uh, uh, Al Khalifa Al is a winner for the Australian, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia region 2022 Cambridge Dedicated Teachers Award. He is a teacher at Keningau Vocational College, Sabah, Malaysia. The second participant is Chegu Pramata Selvaraj. She is the sole winner of 2022 Google Inventor Academic uh, Certificate Coaching Award. And she is a teacher at Sekolah Jenis Kebangsaan Tamil, Ladang Krian Jalan, Bukit Pancho, Nibol Tebal, Malaysia. And the last speaker is Dr. Dr. Mary. Uh, she would like me to call her now, that uh, Cikgu, Cikgu Mary Yap. Uh, she's a retired super principal of Sekolah Melengah Teknik Tawal and Lin Cha Duk Award for in Educational Leadership, Innovation and Development from Simeo Inotech Manila. And she's also the Toko Maluda Rasul Kebangsaan, Toko Guru Kebangsaan, in, and uh, former Deputy Minister of Education, and also former Deputy Minister of Higher Education. And for your, by the way, Prof. Uh, Chegu Mary Yap is also our alumni, uh, earning her PhD at Asia E University. My name is Xiao, and I shall moderate uh, this webinar. In terms of procedures, the moderate I shall present the same issues to these three speakers, followed by their responses, and then question and answer. The participant can post their questions online, and they will be answered during question and answer session. The subsequent question from, the, from me shall be addressed to another speaker on a rotational basis. After all the speakers have given their views, there shall be 10 minutes question and answer to summarize the topic for today. It must be reminded that this webinar shall refrain from discussing any sensitive issues that involve politics, race, and religion. So once again, welcome uh, Chegu Khalifa, Chegu Pramata, and Chegu Meriyap. My first question to Chegu Khalifa, and then followed by uh, Chegu Pramata, Plata and uh, Chegu Mary Yap. First question. Please tell me more about the awards that you have won. How prestigious and how difficult to garner the award? 
Over to you, Pro, uh, Cikgu Khalifa. All right. Uh, thank you, moderator, uh, Professor Xiao. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you also to Asia E University for having me uh, for the webinar. And also good morning to uh, Cikgu Primalata and also Cikgu Mary uh, joining me together uh, in this webinar. So um, before I explain further uh, about the awards, can, can the technical team uh, show the website that uh, of the Cambridge Dedicated Teacher Award. Okay, so okay, so this is the website of the Dedicated Teacher Award. It's legit, don't worry. The, the, the uh, award is legit. So um, the awards that I have gotten recently is the 2022 Cambridge Dedicated Teacher Award, uh, regional level. So it is a global competition, basically in which anyone, uh, teachers, students, can nominate um, a, a school primary or secondary teacher. So um, we nominate someone for something wonderful that they have done. And so one of the students, one of my students have nominated me for the award. Um, I have been told that this year, uh, there were over 7,000 nominations for, for around 113 countries. And um, after being shortlisted to 60 candidates, um, I have been selected as the regional winner for Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia. Okay, then the public will then decide the overall, which is the Global 2022 Cambridge Dedicated Teacher Awards in a vote. So um, if you can see the website here, uh, it stated there that come back on 24th of May to see who the winner is, meaning that the vote has closed. And thank you so much for everyone who have voted for, for me. And the six of us will, one of us will emerge as, uh, as the global winner. So honestly, I was, I was quite surprised when I have been told by a good friend of mine that I have been shortlisted and even more surprised afterwards uh, when I become the, the, the regional winner. So I would like to, to use this opportunity for the, uh, during the webinar to thank all of you, uh, my family, colleagues, friends, students, former students, and whoever you are who have uh, voted me and supported me throughout uh, the process. Uh, okay, so... Like I told you before, the, the vote uh, result will come out on the 24th of May. So I will let you guys know whether I am crowned as the global winner or not. So I think that's uh, sum up overall of, of my answer. Uh, we wish you good luck, uh, Cikgu Khalifa, for uh, the, the uh, global award. Uh, over to you, Prof, uh, Cikgu Prem. Can, can I call Cikgu Prem? Yes, sure, Prof. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, over to you, uh, Cikgu Prem. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Vanakam, happy Teacher's Day, everyone. Um, I just want to start with the quote that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And this quote by Nelson Mandela, which is one of the most famous saying on the value of education. Uh, thanks to Asia E University for inviting me as a speaker for teachers are the pillars of their school success. I would like to thank all the teachers, lecturers, and educators on this special day. A good day to our moderator, Prof. Sio, fellow speakers, Dr. Dr. Mary, uh, teacher Mama Al Khalifa, and greetings to one and all. It gives me uh, immense warmth and great pleasure to grace all of your presence at this morning. To talk about the, the award that I've uh, got, it's um, a Certified Google Innovator Coach Award for 2021. It's a prestigious award by Google for Education, Asia Pacific Region. Uh, we are selected out of 250 uh, participants. And from that, um, uh, there are around 11 uh, people who have been selected as a Certified Innovator Coach for the year, uh, for the week virtual innovator academy uh, for the certified innovators uh, around asia pacific region around 11 people were selected and i'm the only one the sole mission winner for this award uh, we are selected to train the uh, certified innovator uh, around asia pacific region they are around uh, 63 people i mean 63 certified innovator who have been uh, with the applications and they have been selected to attend the Virtual Innovator Academy. And after our coaching session, they are uh, officially graduated as a certified innovator. 
to become a, this uh, to gain this award to become an in certified innovator i have to go through with this uh, first and second level of google certified educator i aware that a lot of teachers uh, uh, aware with this uh, exam you know the gc level 1 and level 2 exam since uh, uh, our ministry has bring the google to the uh, to the schools and uh, teachers, uh, most of the teachers are uh, so interestingly involving in the exam, the basic exam, and also the GCE level one and level two. After that, you can choose to uh, apply for a trainer or innovator. So once you become an innovator, you are eligible to apply for to be a coach for the you know, uh, for the virtual innovator academy. Last time they did as a virtual, and hopefully uh, after this. You know we are in endemic uh, time so hopefully it will be in a uh, face-to-face i mean in person and you're eligible to apply once you are an innovator and uh you just need to apply and you just need to um know uh, let them know that what have you done for the teachers for the kids and i mean for the students and for the community so that's all about the award doctor thank you very much uh the Cikgu Prem and uh, over to you, Cikgu uh, Maria. What's well, your... Thank you very much, Prof. Siao, for having me. And I would like to take this opportunity to wish all the teachers a very happy Teacher's Day. And though I've retired in 2007, I'm still a very, uh, still very much a teacher at heart. And I take this opportunity to congratulate my fellow speakers, Chegu Khalifa and uh, Chegu Pramalata on the outstanding achievement of excellence in innovative teaching. And I'm very confident that both of you will continue to win more awards true to the Teachers Day theme today, uh, this year, which recognizes teachers as the pillars of their school success. I'm deeply humbled to share with you that during my 32 years of service in the teaching profession, my contributions were being acknowledged with awards at the national and regional levels. As we're celebrating Chris, uh, Teacher's Day, um, I would like to talk about the teacher, uh, the Toko Guru Award, which I had received. After my retirement in 2007, I was deeply honored and humbled by Tawau Division Education Office for awarding me Toko Guru Peringkat Bahagian Tawau. And later in 2011, I received the Toko Guru Peringkat Negeri Award from the Sabah State Education Department. And the following year in 2012, saw me receiving Toko Guru Kebangsaan from the Ministry of Education. It was a meaningful ceremony on each occasion that made me feel very special as a teacher. And the main criteria for receiving this award requires a teacher to go above and beyond the regular duties of a teacher to truly make an impact on a school, a district, community, or at the nation at large. Significantly, this award is not a one-off kind of competition, as it requires validation of years of hard work with proven track record of excellence and sacrifice for the teaching profession. Now, sharing a few of my proven track record of performance would include the success of turning around a failing school, which became a case study for the Ministry of Education to refer to in terms of school improvement agenda and leading the school to continuously score 100 percent passes in spm which is a far cry from the 28 percent passes in previous years winning prestigious national awards from the ministry of education was significant and to mention some of the awards they were anugrah quality dalam pengurusan kewangan dan perakaunan anugrah Quality Menteri Pelajaran Malaysia dalam pengurusan sekolah pertandingan 3K which refers to the program keselamatan, kebersihan dan keindahan uh, sekitar sekolah and anugerah kecemelangan Jabatan Pendidikan Technical were very significant achievements. 
My book entitled Visi Kerality, Pengalaman Sekolah Menengah Teknik Tawau Menjadi Sebuah Sekolah Cemerlang was launched by Yang Rahmat Datuk Sri Hishamuddin bin Tun Husin, the Minister of Education then on the 1st of December uh, 2006 at the World Trade Center Kuala Lumpur in conjunction with the National ICT Seminar so that my success story could be replicated in other schools across the country. My models of effective leadership and management tools, which I call DFRAC and ARAS, won me the regional second Lai Chan Duk Award for Educational Leadership Innovations and Development from Simio Innotech, Manila. Now, Simio Innotech then appointed me as an online tutor for its Excel's Excellent in School Leadership Program for Southeast Asia principles. I was early, uh, earlier recognized um, in 2005 as the super principal for excellence in leadership and management at the school level. Unexpectedly, my efforts as a leading member of the teaching profession have been recognized on Prof Prophet Muhammad's birthday, 2007, by Jakim as the recipient of the Toko Maulidu Rasul Award of Exemplary Leadership Contributions for Sharing Knowledge. And I believe that this recognition has raised the status of the teaching profession in our Malaysian society. The symbolism of the award becomes more important because although I'm a non-Muslim, my contributions considered as universal is actually contributions as a professional educator, cutting across religions, ethnic, language, cultural, and geographical boundaries. My training program for super leadership training successfully matured into the formation of professional learning communities or PLCs among the excellent principals in Sabah using the concept of leaders leading leaders or leaders developing leaders. And nothing had made me happier or prouder than seeing my fellow education leaders whom I had led and developed succeeded in the quest for excellence in leadership, a rewarding aspect of my contributions, which I will always cherish because the greatest return any leader can generate is to develop more leaders. In all sincerity, I certainly didn't expect anything in return for my years of service. Though I felt elated receiving the Tokom Guru Awards, I did not view them as a sole recognition of my own accomplishments. Rather, I saw the recognition as an affirmation of the significance of the teaching profession on behalf of aspirations held by the teachers throughout the country because none of the work which I did was one person's responsibility. Nevertheless, it was a meaningful milestone in my teaching career, a career which I grew to love as nothing was more rewarding than seeing my students grow and succeed in the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mary. Uh, Mary Yap and um, well, it fits well with the uh, theme of the uh, the uh, uh, talk, I mean uh, Teachers Day for the nation. And uh, by the way, for the international audience, uh, when uh, Chegu Mary was talking about uh, SPM, uh, for those international audience, it is equivalent to O level. So O level. So okay, we we may for those who are not very familiar with the uh, uh, with Malaysia, uh, let me just uh, highlight to you that all these three speakers uh, came from uh, came come from the uh, uh, somewhat deprived uh, situation. For example, uh, like uh, Tegu Khalifa, uh, he he comes from uh, uh, Keningau. Keningau is in the middle of uh, Sabah, the eastern side of the. Uh, 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 Malaysia and Chegu Prima is teaching in uh, an estate school, 
a primary Tamil uh, estate school. Estate is um, uh, is it a rubber estate or a uh, uh, palm oil? Cikgu Prema? Palm oil. Palm oil. Okay. While uh, Cikgu Meriap was then in Sandakan, which is also a very small town at uh, uh, in somewhere in Sabah. So I would like to pose this question to, despite of all the uh, odds that you have gone through, uh, I would like to know more about your work roles and how did you get such an idea for this project awards? How much time have you dedicated to this award? To have garnered such award, any support or encouragement? Uh, I will pass it to uh, Miss uh, Cikgu Prema first. Cikgu Prema, would you like to answer this second question? Yes, of course. Good. Of course, Prof. Um, sorry, I just want to check. Can you hear me? <coughs> yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Okay, so everyone uh, knew that I'm an ICT teacher at uh, SJKT Latin Korean, Penang, a certified innovator in 2014 and the coach in 2021. Meanwhile, I'm one of the leader of Google Educator Group, Asia Pacific Connect. Uh, my work role is uh, teaching primary students. I taught them Tamil language, mathematics, ICT, robotics, and STEM. Usually, I follow some teaching methods, for example, teacher center, learner center, uh, content focused and uh, interactive participative methods. I always ensure that they are indulged with uh, effective learning. I do train my students on robotics, uh, innovation and ICT competition. Um, by bringing technology into the classroom, I regard myself as more to a facilitator. My students are excelling in the above mentioned field in national and uh, international level. Apart from that, as a GEG leader, I conduct lots of uh, seminars and uh, webinars throughout Asia Pacific region for educators. Uh, the educators are namely school teachers, uh, lecturers and professors. I share the skills on methods of teaching and learning with the latest technologies which can help the students and, uh, of course, teachers to deliver their lessons effectively. I do conduct bootcamp for GCE, uh, I mean, uh, that I mentioned earlier, that Google Certified Educator Level 1 and Level 2, and train the educators to become a Google Certified Trainer or Google Certified Innovator. I do believe that uh, all this become an evidence for the coach applications which the panel has considered me uh, to become a certified coach for the Visual Innovator Academy 2021. So the time I dedicated, uh, I can say it's quite long as I started my journey with the Google uh, since 2014, when Google Malaysia invited me to the Google Design Day. I have the opportunity to meet Asia Pacific team there and I could say that uh, it's all begin from there. Um, the major support for my success is, of course, my family, uh, my hubby, my friends and colleagues. It's called a moral support. Actually, they didn't aware on exactly what I'm doing until I received the award. But they believe in me and my enthusiasm, perseverance and effort. Thanks again for the question, Prof. I get back to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, we the uh, I pass this question now to uh, Cikgu Mary Yap for to enlighten us. Thank you, Prof. Well, talking yeah. about my work roles, the caterpillar transforming into a butterfly can be used as a metaphor to describe the process of my professional growth, which has stretched from one dimension to another from knowing something on the surface and then undergoing a deep experience that had led me to a level of complete job satisfaction by the time I retired in 2007. Technically speaking, my work roles have been uh, have progressed through a series of vertical promotions 
And I saw myself growing professionally through three different phases, which I call them the beginning phase, starting in 1975 to 1983, the mid-career phase, 1983 to 1995, and the professional phase, 1995 to 2007. These phases of development were very much linked to the different role that I had played, not only as a teacher, but also as a lecturer, head of the Tao Zone Schools Inspectorate, principals of different schools, and director of teachers' training colleges. The beginning phase corresponded to a time in my career when I first entered the teaching profession in 1975. And like any new teacher, I had to attend pedagogical and technical skills required to do the job, like handling the discipline of students, managing the English syllabus and teaching students of mixed abilities. To further improve my job performance, I had to keep up with the new educational development like the latest technology, teacher leadership, critical thinking, mind mapping, problem solving, etc. The beginning phase of my professional journey found fulfillment in the mid-career phase. The second phase saw me very occupied not only with teaching, but with other professional activities like attending conferences and workshops sponsored by the different divisions of the Ministry of Education, for example, the Federal Schools Inspectorate Schools Division, Teacher Education Division, State Education Department, and professional organizations like the British Council. And I had to return to conduct continuing professional development sessions to fellow school inspectors, teachers, and principals. I was also entrusted with the responsibility to write reports, articles, present papers at conferences, seminars and workshops, and coordinate events sponsored by organizations like the National School Principal Council, MELTA, ELTA. And when KBSM was implemented in 1988, I was appointed as one of the national and state key resource personnel to train English teachers throughout the country from Form 1 to Form 5 using the KBSM English syllabus. The professional phase saw me heading different schools, a mission school, a rural school, and then the vocational and technical school. Apart from being a principal, I was given a key role in mentoring teachers aspiring to be school leaders and school leaders who were ready to be developed as uh, excellent leaders. Hence, I played a very active role in strategic organizational planning of leadership training programs for the school's division in Ministry of Education and Institute Aminuddin Baki. Such involvement also saw an increase in duties and responsibilities, including my participation at international educational events, either as a speaker or a participant. And these events, to me, helped significance as they had given me the opportunity to turn the world to our Malaysian education system in my presentations. With my promotion to DG54, as an excellent principal in 2003 and subsequently to JUSA C as a super principal in 2005, my role had gone beyond the school boundaries. After my retirement, I was appointed senior consultant for educational leadership training in Institute Aminuddin uh, Baki on a three year contract and was appointed as one of the advisors to the Minister of Education on Cluster Schools of Excellence until 2011. As an education leader who had served in different leadership capacities under the Ministry of Education, heavy responsibilities were many. I had found that those years of hard work were long, but yet too short. Challenges were many too, but there had never been a dull moment. And I will not deny that I had an extremely enriching, though tough professional journey 
which is blessed with multifaceted experience as I was fully supported by the State Education Department, the Ministry of Education, organizations like British Council, and of course, not forgetting my dear husband and sons. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cikgu uh, uh, Maryam, and uh, we'd like to hear now from Cikgu uh, Khalifa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Over to you, yeah. All right, um, so my, my career began in 2010 uh, as an English teacher at my college. So other than teaching English, I am also the head of uh, ICT unit in, in Keningau Vocational College. So I have been supported by my, my wonderful team of um, ICT experts, as you can see, and ICT enthusiasts uh, to help me to develop more, um, how to say, digitalized uh, of our system here. So uh, this is for you, right, guys? So uh, other than that, I also like to uh, integrate uh, trending technology uh, into my teaching. And I love to explore ways to share it with my students. I myself am passionate in information technology. And it all started when I was small, this, this small, I guess, uh, because I love playing PC games. I think some of the viewers here in the webinars know me since secondary school, you know, during my university years. Uh, I, I really love to play games competitively. I, I joined several um, competitive uh, computer games tournaments. I won a couple of um, uh, awards and so on. Uh, but that was during my, my, my younger days, right? So uh, over years, uh, becoming a teacher, when technology has uh, rapidly progressed, more, more cool stuff emerges. And instead of keeping it to myself, I decided to share my passion with my students. So now I'm not really a great storyteller uh, talking without any visual context. So can the technical team show my slides uh, to the audience uh, so that they will know what I'm talking about? <laughs> So I think the year 2017 was uh, my turning point after I went to, to Korea for a three months Korea Malaysia Teacher Exchange Program or uh, we can shorten it to COMTEP. It is organized by uh, Teacher Professionalism Division, BPG, uh, BPK uh, this time around in Malaysia and also uh, organized by uh, UNESCO UPCU. So I have been posted to Seoul Technical High School and my wonderful mentor there, Mr. Im Hyun Bin, he really changed my, my perspective of the world of teaching. Okay. And I think it was it was the start of all the creative ideas since uh, the exchange program really brought up my mind in the world of technology. So that includes uh, drones, robotic, 3D printing, encoding, and so on. Same like um, I think Miss uh, Chigu Prema, right? So we, we have the same passion, I guess. And um, afterwards, uh, when, I, when I came back to Malaysia, I straight away uh, organized an international program with uh, Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education on December 2017 for a drone class and training. So we, we train my students, several of my students, in, in drone technology, how to assemble the drones, how to fly the drones, and some tips uh, how to uh, to create drone from scratch. It, it was like a three days program. It's a short program, but um, for them to come here to a rural part of Sabah, especially, uh, they landed, the, the Korean, they landed to uh, KKIA, Kota Kinabalu International Airport, and took bus to Keningau. It's, it's really not a small feat, I guess. So afterwards, um, I also, me, me and my team, not only me, okay? This this event is not only about me. It's about my team also. Uh, we organize an international program with Seoul Technical High School. Remember that I told you that I have been posted to Seoul Technical High School. So this time around, the next year, we, we brought them together. Uh, we brought them to Keningau um, for a one-week um, LCOP school student exchange program. So the Korean students, I think if not mistaken, it's only 12 of them or 15 of them, um, they, they stayed in our dormitory. Keningau Vocational College has a good dormitory. So they stayed there, they mingled with students, and they also taught 
um, my students, uh, their culture, and also the technology that is trending over there, which is drone and um, robots and so on. And also, they also teach, uh, taught my students and also teachers um, some um, Korean delicacies over there. We have um, a culinary kitchen over here in, in my college. So uh, they use the kitchen uh, to demonstrate um, the Korean traditional dishes. And then afterwards, um, August 2018, uh, I brought uh, my team uh, to achieve third place in World Robotic Championship in, in Asia Pacific University. I think this is different than Asia University, right? So um, this is national level as a coach. And with this achievement, I, uh, we, we brought the team to, to Korea, to the Kintech Exhibition Hall in Gayangshi, Korea. And we once again achieved third place in International Robot Contest IRC. I don't know why we didn't get first or second, always get third, but um, well, achievement is an achievement. So this time around, not only us, there are also several other teams from Malaysia. So we are very proud of them, of my students. They are better than me, especially uh, in, in uh, handling the robots. And then uh, November 2018, I flew back to Korea um, to be awarded as APTE. APTE is uh, Asia Pacific Teacher Exchange Program uh, as a best practice teacher. And um, I presented the speech in front of uh, the Deputy Minister of Education during that time. Um, if you can see the picture there, during a conference in Korea. So it's like a two, two three days, a short, short conference. Next, um, 2019, what I did was um, we won a micro grant um, for YC Lee Boot Camp. This is organized by um, YC Lee. And uh, it is in UMS, University of Malaysia, Sabah. It's a community leadership program. We won 2,000 ringgit to implement a social, how to say, a social project. So our project is a, was about um, to reduce plastic waste um, in Sabah because I think it's happening around the world that there are lots of plastic waste being disposed improperly. So we use the grant to help uh, to start, start up a project. And also 2019 also, uh, September, uh, uh, we organized an eight days program for my students to Korea. So we, we return back their, their uh, program, at this, how to say, uh, the program yeah, called Baja Korea. Yep. So um, uh, we went to several South Korea institutions some of them Seoul Technical High School, Seoul Robotic High School, Seoul uh, Polytechnic, and we also involved in several of the Funded Korean Network uh, programs in Korea. So it's a eight days full of programs. Some of them still have food ache. I think they, they, they couldn't recover from the, uh, from the ache um, when they went to Korea. And some of them want to return back to Korea. And also 2019, uh, we organized international program with Daedong Middle School. They came, they, Daedong Middle School, they came to, to Keningau for a short while and they, they did a cooking demonstrations and also we brought them for a steamboat in Keningau. So I like to highlight the steamboat part because it's very cute. Mm, my students and them, they mingle together and well, they exchange whatever things that they are exchanging. I do not, I, I'm not sure what they have exchanged. But it seems that they are in a good mood. And um, afterwards, before the pandemic hits, I think, um, we won a grant for, uh, once again, YC Lee, but this is Seeds for the Future, US, um, on February 2020 in Hanoi, Vietnam. So we, we, have, to, we have to go to Hanoi, Vietnam and to receive a, a 40,000 grant to implement a Eureka Hub. Eureka Hub, basically a project, a group project me and my team, we tried to, how to say, organize uh, technology courses for rural rural students, uh, especially in Kenya Vocational College. Some of them, as you can see in the pictures, were like a drone challenge. We, we bought a couple of um, drones and we did a challenge. And also we did a pitching competition. 
and we we did the 3d printing and it was really fun during that time before the pandemic and then when the pandemic hits um i couldn't go to a conference that i always go to uh, when i was in korea which is the ssaem online conference so we did it online so on no november 2020 i became once again a presenter uh, for the SSAEM online conference, organized also by the same UNESCO FCU and um, organized by uh, BPK. And uh, afterwards, uh, on 2021, we published together an anthology, Anyong Asio Cikgu. I The book is still here if you want to buy. If you want to buy, maybe you guys can contact me. Uh, I'm the assistant editor and one of the writers for the book. And um, once again, we uh, the Comtep. I'm sorry, the Comtep program uh, is being organized every year. But since the, it, it is a pandemic, um, 2021 we organize it online. So we have been selected once again as a main school for Comtep 2021 uh, from the duration of May till July 2021. So uh, doing it online is a bit of course is a very huge difference than going there right so but then um at least my students they have the opportunity to experience uh, classes with korean teachers and also um they interact uh one-to-one -one with the korean students online before this they they only they only saw it on youtube only uh drooling over opa and uni is there but then some um, they 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 can speak communicate with the koreans face to face using using webcam and um, also uh, September till October 2021, we also organized uh, online international student exchange program with Daedong Middle School. Once again, Daedong Middle School. Uh, so 15 students participated. As you can see in the picture here, uh, it is more like a class to class uh, interactions. So a teacher from Korea, they teach. And then uh, Malaysian students, they will attend the online class. And then same goes, I will teach um korean students some of the things that um, famous in malaysia for example uh, so it took around two months to finish the uh, the program and then we exchange gift by posting our um, souvenirs to them and they also post their souvenirs to us right i think that's all from me but then oh, oh wait wait um so the exchange teacher program they, they created opportunity for me to further develop relationship with school from Korea. Um, last year, it was uh, Incheon Gwang High School and it always has been Seoul Technical High School and Seoul Robotic High School, okay? So really, the time to develop all of this is uh, unmeasurable since I didn't keep track of it. And the effort is actually accumulated over time. Um, in terms of support, of course, um, I have plenty. I have plenty of support from, from my loved one, from my family, from colleagues, from friends, from students, and even former students, they, they come and support the programs. I couldn't do it alone. I have plenty. Uh, otherwise, all of these activity, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't come up with, with it. However, um, the most important support that I think is necessary, uh, at least for myself, is yourself which is i am the biggest support of myself huh? the ability of not giving up so i think that's all for now yeah, thank, thank you. you very much uh Chigu khalifa it looks like uh, uh there are two things one is your that korea is your favorite uh, place to visit no? and then the other one is to i mean i if i can summarize that the education now is not I mean, distance is not any uh, barrier to uh, education anymore because uh, you can do this through virtual um, mobile uh, classroom and so on. True. Well, okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please post your questions uh, uh, at the end of each uh, uh, question. And then uh, we would like to uh, let the participants or the, the speakers answer them. And in so far, we have heard about your success. The three of you are your success. So success is all about hard work. Nothing comes easily. Please share your challenges and successes. And more importantly, 
the fun and satisfaction you have encountered in this journey? How could you inspire your fellow teachers to emulate your foot your uh, footsteps? So I would like to to take uh, good Mary up to answer this question. Is it take Mary? Uh, yeah, Mary up to take this question first. Thank you, Prof. Well, in general, challenges in the teaching profession fall into two broad categories. First, the educational duties involve overseeing the general educational demands of a school. And most teachers, new or old, have a tough job because so many responsibilities fall on our shoulders with challenges as we assume, not only instructional issues, but administrative duties as well. In addition to these duties, we must also manage people. And that is a task that can be very difficult as, as it demands time, patience, and commitment to forming relationships at all levels in the school. Hence, it just cannot be denied that challenges are part and parcel of our teaching career. I had my share of challenges with the unenviable task of turning around Scholar Menengah Technik Tawal, a failing school then, and it was the toughest challenge that I had ever gone through in my years of service. My personal analysis of this experience clearly showed that I had encountered a crisis challenge where the group of vocational teachers rejected me as the principal right from the start as they knew that they would face an unexpected change in circumstances that had threatened their own way of working. Aggression came in the form of initial resistance to changes, conflicts and clash of ideas, sourcing for funds to support our infrastructure, improvement projects, and opportunities for teachers and support staff to attend continuing professional development courses, etc., etc. However, I realized that this group of teachers actually had potential that simply had not been developed. Hence, my challenge then was to help them to unpack their old practice, behavior, and principles in order to embrace a new set of ideas and values that could improve themselves and the school performances. Amidst the challenges, I needed to maintain my own sanity by creating a positive work-life attitude. I had to work very hard, applying a high level of emotional intelligence with a good sense of humor and my tireless effort in earning the trust of the teachers and non-teaching staff was based on the need to nurture trust, building a deep trust by creating a space where the teachers felt safe to ask questions and to share feedback, suggestions, and even to joke. Exercise delegation to release responsibility to my teachers and non-teaching staff, which gave them the chance to act learn and thrive was important. And enhancing the work culture by conveying small acts of thanks, gratitude, and appreciation has really helped build the culture of development and commitment. And it's very important then the need to have the need to develop a strong team of teachers and non-teaching staff to become innovative. And that had resulted in positive ripple effects on teaching, learning, and school improvement. When my teachers felt safe and comfortable with me, they opened up and took up appropriate tasks willingly and even came up with brilliant ideas to transform the school. Despite the challenges, it had been a wonderful and enriching experience with the formation of the teachers and non-teaching staff club fun activities were organized such as celebrating birthdays marriage and birth uh, birth of children cooking competitions and monthly outdoor activities 
and to honor and appreciate everyone in the school for his or her commitment, hard work and dedication. Special events like the principal's dinner in conjunction with the teacher's day and the school's Oscar night co-hosted by the Parents' Teacher Association and I were organized. Of course, we celebrated a lot, especially when the school scored 100% passes for SPM or won awards. But at the same time, we also learned from our failures as feedback for improvement and a stepping stone to further success. And definitely KFC was our favorite food. Yes, we had fun and we had joy. And my greatest satisfaction had come from seeing transformation of my teachers. My unpolished diamonds were sparkling. And the key learning points from this experience was involving everyone in the school and our willingness to work together as a consolidated team to undergo and internalize the process of change from the old culture to the culture of excellence. And the rest is history. To my fellow teachers and fellow principals, I was seen as their role model and to encourage them to emulate my footsteps. I accepted many invitations from schools, district, state education department, and the Ministry of Education to share my experience and expertise, which I happily accepted as experience and expertise are not blessings if we don't share them with others. Informal consultations, discussions were just a phone call away and that sealed our professional friendship and commitment to help one another. Many fellow principals have found my book VC Corality helpful and I'm very happy to have been able to inspire others in the quest for educational Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. You have left a lot of things behind for the other teachers and principals to emulate. And um, we would like to now pass it on to Chegu Khalifa for your story. And how have you, well, how uh, can, could you inspire your fellow teachers to emulate your full step? Mm. Over to you, Chegu Khalifa. Hmm. Wait. Um. Well. Thank you, moderator. I I do agree with your statement that nothing comes easily. So behind all the recognitions and awards and all the seemingly successful executed programs, come blood, sweat, and tears. So, but then if you are passionate in what you do, I think this won't be any problem at all. Then depends on this uh, situation. Try not to do things because you want to get recognitions or, or rewards, okay? And I think challenges that I face up to this day, they are different from time to time. Um, because when I was still a new teacher, the challenges were different, which is um, to gain trust from, from senior colleagues, uh, colleagues and also to gain trust from the management. People don't know you because we are still new, right? And, and you had to prove yourself by maybe following orders or footsteps of your senior teachers. But then I didn't do that. Uh, but uh, because I, I don't know, uh, I, initiate, I initiated a many internal events. Um, can the technical sh share the slides? Okay, these are some of the internal events that I did during my younger days becoming a teacher. When I was still new, um, internet event like some Counter Strike competition, computer game competition, on stage modern dance competition. During this time, it was still rare because uh, traditional com dance competitions they are plenty, even organized by KPM and so on. But then internally, uh, I, uh, we did um, uh, computer games competitions and modern dance competitions and even board game exhibitions. Uh, if you know what is uh, tabletop games. So, of course, these new things to the table will bring you many issues since it hasn't been done before, okay? Uh, and I have no reference to refer to, like um, the yardstick, I guess. Uh, is, it, is it 
any issue to, to conduct this kind of things and so on. The risk. I did many mistakes. Honestly, I did many mistakes during that time uh, because, um, well, it's still new and I didn't calculate the risk uh, properly. But then those mistakes took me to a whole new level. Uh, now I can proudly say that um, my team and I have organized many international level events between my college and also some of the South Korea institutions. When my students benefited from my programs, I think that is where my satisfactions came from. Um, how do I know this? Well, my students and my former students, they talk about it a lot. They even miss the moment of being involved with the activity. Not so much activity in the classroom, but the activity, external activity, extracurricular activity that they have participated during their school years. And I can see that they have developed new skills. For example, uh, some of my students nowadays, they are good in PR, public relations. They, they can speak to foreigners. Even they become a tour guide in Sabah. So if you guys come to Sabah, find these students, they can they can um, lion you properly. And uh, you can see that they have developed new skills revolving around the activity that uh, I have done uh, with them. Okay, so I think maybe that story might inspire you somehow or the other, but I, that is my my view of it. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, very uh, sweet, uh, interesting experience that you have had. What about you, Prof. Uh, Ajigu Prema? Um, yes, Prof. It's indeed, actually. Um, the self-belief and hard work will always earn success to one. And um, of course, nothing comes easily. I face a lot of challenges to become a successful teacher. My passion is the one and only thing which encouraged me to never give up. I would like to mention about a quote by People's President APJ Abdul Kalam here. If you fail, never give up because fail uh, means first attempt in learning. And I learned a lot throughout my journey. So I like to share my journey here. Since I was involved with Google Certified Innovators around the world and uh, selected as one of the Google Educator Group, uh, Asia Pacific Connect leader, we could uh, keep on engaging to share our knowledge, uh, teaching methods, and the impact on students. When I wanted to apply the method, bring the latest technology to my classroom, the first uh, challenge is waiting for me there. Yes, lack of tech fa uh, facilities. Um, it's quite a hard time uh, where there is uh, no computers in the school. Fortunately, my students won a consolation prize in a Frog Asia Hopping Teams competition, which attracted a contribution of 41 Chromebooks to my school. The competition result won grand winner and 10 consolation winners where my school is the only Tamil school, and there is a one SJKC and a one SK. The rest are the universities, uh, college, and institutes. This made my job easier where I introduced the Google Apps using Chromebooks to my kids. I would like to note here that at that time, my kids not even knew how to use the computer. With God's grace, it was just a right timing, actually. As you mentioned, Prof, um, things never been easy. As my kids was introduced with the uh, devices for the first time, they are struggling to even find the letters on the keyboard. Um, they would type letters one by one in the beginning, but um, they grabbed it quickly until they can code well in handling the robots for robotic competition. Um, they made me realize that as long as we gave them the uh, opportunity and uh, space, they will make use of it. Never ever underestimate a kid's talent because each and everyone is uh, talented in their own way. Um, I felt that not only students um, uh, to be uh, to trained, you know. Uh, I mean, not only the students, the fellow teachers should know about the tech usage so that it make uh, it make their work easy. 
I mean, uh, it will uh, give the less burden in writing the lesson plan. And of course, the students will have fun learning. As a Google Educator Group leader, during the uh, weekends, I conduct workshop in my school for my colleagues and teachers nearby schools on how to integrate technology into their lessons. Uh, the workshop nearby, uh, the workshop I, uh, which I started uh, to my nearby school teachers, to my colleague and nearby school teachers, is later spread the wings to the schools under PKG, Pusat Kegiatan Guru, uh, nearby districts, nearby states, national and also Asia Pacific region. The notable thing is the workshop are now in Tamil, Malay, English, and also in Mandarin. So uh, apart from that, I started to collaborate with educators around the world in bringing the best skills to my students. Even though they are from underprivileged background, I'm so proud that they got a award and excel in ICT. Uh, the, uh, they are the champion of the multimedia competition by BSTP and the Ministry of Education. Also, uh, they, have, they have won a silver medal in innovation competition, in uh, international competition, and uh, the bronze medal in robotic competition, uh, both in national and international level. Uh, as Chegu Khalifa, we, we do always receive the bronze medal for robotic competition. As you said, the achievement is achievement. And the colors of the medal is not decided the achievement, is it? And um, uh, to inspire the fellow teachers, I always there to help them. Ron, I, I do gain some uh, special award apart from the certified coach, uh, such as Global Inspiring Women Award, uh, Outstanding ICT Teacher Award, Pride of Workmanship Award, and uh, Women in Science Award. I do invited as a guest speaker from a uh, college from India, uh, CTTE College uh, Women for uh, uh, Women College India, uh, Forum Kita Cyber by Cyber Security Malaysia under the Ministry of uh, Communication and Multimedia, EduTech Malaysia Online Forum, and uh, also from Google Malaysia. My success story has been published uh, uh, in the Star, the Star newspaper, uh, Malaysia Kini. Tamil newspaper and uh, also Bernama TV News. After all, what I can say is it's about it's it's all about the patient and uh, hard work from the teacher themselves. Thank you, Prof, and uh, I get back to okay, you. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Prema. It looks like uh, teaching, like any other professions, has ups and downs too. So it is not uh, 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 always a bit of rose, roses and um, and in so far the. Um, Audience has one question posed to the Chegu Mary Yap, yeah, and uh, it's from Cairo Anwar Junus. Uh, and if I may translate the question from from Basa for our international audience, he's asking what were the sweetest memories while serving as an educator and Deputy Minister. Over to you, Chegu Maria. Uh, can the administrator translate that question? For our international audience? Okay, never mind. Uh, while we are waiting for the translation, uh, let me repeat the question in English. What were the sweetest memory while serving as an educator and Deputy Minister uh, for uh, directed to Chegu Mary Yap. Uh, Prof Xiao, yeah. um, sweetest memories for me serving as an educator and then um, as a deputy minister in the Ministry of Education and then later in the Ministry of Higher Education will always be when I spend time with the students. As a teacher, like I say, you know, we play a very important role and I would always say that teachers touch the future and we make the difference so to me my sweetest moments or my sweetest memories is where I can spend time with the students and as an educator I was um, always uh, teaching in the secondary school but when I became the deputy minister of education I had the privilege to be with primary school uh, students and I just love them. 
So I can't tell you the, you know, the number of uh, events that I've had with them. And I remember that there was a program which I really fell in love with the students and that has got to be the Caring School uh, program. It's such a joy to be able to go down to the ground to be with the students and at the same time to see the happy faces, the excitement in learning. Yeah. So, like I say, you know, even though I assumed the role of a deputy minister, I was still very much a teacher at heart. So to me, my sweetest memories, my sweetest moments would be when I'm with the students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, while the question, that, that question was directed to uh, Cikgu Mary, yeah? uh, what about you two? Do you have any sweet memories that you'd like to share with your audience, um, Cikgu Khalifa? Sweet memory, yeah. hmm. yeah. there are a lot of it. Wow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, but then the sweetest might be when I managed to tie a relationship with the South Korea institutions and brought them over here uh, since 2017 and also until up to this date. I think that brings a lot of impact to um, to my college especially and also to Malaysia because students, they, they can interact, they can, um, how to say, um, communicate with uh, students from outside Malaysia face to face or even online so those kind of uh, those kind of things might be my, my sweetest memory as an educator okay thank you very much and what about you uh, Cikgu Prema um yeah as Cikgu the sweetest course, memory yeah. that you cannot forget <laughs> yeah there is a lot uh, when I brought the uh, uh, students for the competition and uh, we won uh, like we won the awards and uh, we are selected for the next level and there is a one memory I would like to share is um, uh, during the the competition I've men mentioned earlier that uh, the Frog Asia Hobbington competition so that time I just uh, started my career in uh, like uh, one or two years in the schools and um, I, I have a, uh, I'm a, a communication degree holder last time so I know uh, to make a video, it's it's how hard to make a video, uh, to manage with the kids and uh, to make a video. And then as I, when I heard the, about the competition, when they are do the briefing there, and I feel like, uh, okay, so what I feel like, uh, okay, we, we can't do this because when I was in university, it's, it's far difficult for me to do with, the, with my uh, friends and with you know, the primary students. And I, th I thought it's it's very hard. And um, it came one, one of my students and asked me, okay, teacher, so when we are going to start to doing this uh, video <laughs> shooting and all these things? And I said, uh, I don't think so that we are going to do. Then she, she, they are so excited. They said, okay, teacher, we, we, are, uh, uh, we are ready to do the uh, video and we are excited to act on that. And all these things are encouraged me to uh, make up with the competition and we won the consolation prizes. Thank you. Uh, well, we are now moving to the last questions, and I would like to uh, welcome the audience to pose more questions uh, to make this session more interactive. And my last question is to Chigu Prem first. Huh? Uh, when someone asks you why, uh, why you would ever become a teacher, what is your response? NUTP, the National Union of Teaching Profession, reported that COVID-19 pandemic has triggered an exodus of teachers leaving the profession. What is your advice for them to remain in this noble pro profession? Over to you, uh, Prem, Mr. Chegu Prem. Uh, we can't hear you, please unmute. sorry uh, okay okay um that was a good question prof um to be honest i never thought i'll become a teacher i believe that uh, god has a better plan for me that's why that's why i'm here 
Uh, being a teacher, I always um, plan to give my students a fun learning environment so that they won't be under pressure. Uh, Project-based learning will help them to bring their own talent. So not to be missed that I felt the pressure during COVID-19 pandemic in um, make sure the students are kept engaging with teachers, attending online classes, uh, receive the notes, uh, material, and so on. When the school uh, the schools were open, the tasks were multiple multiplies for the teachers. You know, the task I mentioned here is uh, not about the teaching and learning. It's apart from the teaching and learning. I would like to advise that um, nothing is permanent. I always believed in a tagline that this will move on. The beauty of this tagline is you can use it in all the situation, and that's a truth indeed. Um, so the teachers uh, who are uh, in a pressure, so I, what I want to say is the kids are need you. Look at the faces that craving for knowledge. They need you to be a facilitator, motivator in carving their futures. That's all, Prof. Back to you. Thank you. Much and uh, Tegu Khalifa, you are also in ICT and I think some of us uh, having uh, flight over ICT, and how could you motivate us? Uh, afraid I mean, of I mean, within the same question, within the same question, yeah, yeah. That is, uh, why would you ever become a teacher? And uh, COVID nineteen has uh, created a, a exodus of teachers leaving the profession. And what is your advice to them to stay on in the uh, noble in this noble profession? Right. Why I become a teacher? So there are many reasons, obviously, and the reason accumulate over time. And one of it is, of course, to educate our vocational students and equipping them uh, equipping them with soft skills. And since I teach English in college, at the very least, um, I want my students, I want vocational students to communicate. They can communicate. They are able to communicate in English and use English as a medium of communication when they are, when they are working soon. So vocational college aim is to produce as many skilled workers when they graduated. They entered vocational college at the age of 16 and then they graduated at the age of 19. During that time, they will learn many skills according to their programs and, of course, uh, academic skills too, uh, especially English. They learn how to create a resume, uh, CV. They learn how to be interviewed uh, in English and so on. So I would like them to use English as a medium of communication. Uh, and then other than that, um, another reason I, I become a teacher is to expose the students, especially the rural students of Sabah, uh, to be exposed to various evolving technology. Even though uh, nowadays, many information can be accessed through your fingertip. They can just scroll the internet, search uh, whatever they like. We still, I think we still need educator, we still need teacher to guide them. And most importantly, to give them resources so that they can experience all the information firsthand. For example, like, like the 2019 programs where I, I brought my kids to Korea. So all, all the, the opas and all the unis that they saw on social media, they can experience it themselves when they, when they stay in Hongi, when they stay in South Korea. So um, for the advice, I, I don't have any solid advice for teachers who have second thoughts in leaving the profession. I mean, they, they want to leave the professions because I am sure that these teachers, they have their own issues with I have not experienced it yet or never experienced it. Maybe because um, they have issues of health, uh, family problems, or simply that they find over time that they are not cut to be a teacher. So I wish the best for all of you who are brave and determined to pave a different route uh, in your life. But one thing I can say is that um, be resilient, be strong. When you are in this teaching profession, be strong. 
problem will always come when you are doing when you are executing something not everyone will support in what you do as everybody has different opinions about life about let's say the programs that you are doing it or the method of teaching that you are teaching your students not everyone will agree with you but hey it shows that you are uh, initiating something great it's something that people never experienced it before so continue doing it with calculated risk and execute it um, without remorse i think that is my advice thank you prof thank you uh, thank you uh... Cikgu Khalifa, um, Cikgu Datuk Mary, I was told, I overheard just now that you started teaching back in 1975. Uh, that was also the year which I started teaching, and uh, but we went on different paths. I went into the university as a lecturer, and you continue your journey uh, in the, the in the school and uh, colleges. Uh, as far as my, I'm concerned, I have no regret, but. <laughs> Uh, I leave it to your wisdom, Cikgu uh, Dr. for your answer and also advice to the uh, audience. Okay, thank you, Prof. Well, at first I found myself in a profession that did not seem meaningful as my dream was to become a lawyer. It was an unrealized dream as my parents could not afford it. But God blessed me with a federal scholarship to do a degree in education at the University of Malaya. After graduating, I was trying to look for a way to make broader impact on society without realizing that being a teacher meant that I was actually enriching children's life, not just through core education, uh, educational skills like reading, mathematics and science, but also through the moral values in life. When I reread Marshall's hierarchy of needs, that one of the most fundamental human needs were to have a sense of significance, I then realized that my work as a teacher was important since I was going to have an influence on the life of the students. Later, after going into the classrooms, I discovered that I have an aptitude for working with students. So while developing a sense of purpose and meaning along the way, I felt that it was my moral imperative and a calling from God to go into the teaching profession. Hence, the sweetest memory as a teacher and deputy minister was to be with the students. So when I realized that the work which I did actually had a purpose beyond myself, I stayed motivated and passionate about being a teacher. Today is rather worrying to read about teachers leaving the profession, not only in Malaysia, but throughout the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic and other factors as well. Deciding to leave a job can be hard. And for teachers, leaving the profession can be downright heartbreaking especially after seeing the happy, innocent faces of the students and their excitement to learn. In fact, many teachers relish their teaching careers after seeing the success of their students. Hence, for many to give up this noble profession will be a deep loss because teaching is actually a rewarding career as there are unique benefits to be enjoyed, such as making a positive impact, help students to develop and learn and help them to have a positive influence on their future. Well, schools are the heart of the communities and all careers start with an education. In fact, teaching is a profession that creates other professions and being a role model Teachers are seen as respected leaders in the community and teachers can embrace a balanced lifestyle where teachers enjoy many perks such as holidays and have time to spend with their own children whom they can also educate. There are also varied employment options including permanent and pensionable service, temporary service 
or even contract for service. Getting different experience in a career where the possibilities are endless will give teachers the opportunity to either stay in the classroom or progress into leadership roles. Having opportunity to attend free continuing professional development or CPD and training organized by the Ministry of Education and State Education Department to further improvement, uh, to further improve oneself in pedagogy or educational leadership is yet another benefit. Joining the school's community, we find teachers are actually a familiar and valued member of the school community, which can sometimes feel more like an extended family, especially for teachers who are from another state or another town. Enjoying the many rewards and financial initiatives is yet another benefit. We have time-based promotions, yearly increment in salary, yearly bonus and for special occasion, free medical services, living allowances, housing allowances, traveling and food allowances on outstation duties, availability of scholarship with full-time pay while doing postgraduate degrees, financial, personal and professional benefits if teachers teach in rural or remote schools as they receive hardship allowances, vocational technical teachers receive critical allowances and teachers also enjoy free accommodation. And last but not least, teachers can enjoy lifelong learning and, teacher, and teaching gives teachers the chance to dedicate your life to learning. So in view of all these benefits, my humble advice to those teachers who have intention to leave teaching is really to give it a more serious thought. Use Edward de Bono's uh, consider all factors or CAF thinking skill. In considering all the factors in a situation like this before resigning, such as looking into the factors affecting themselves like job placement, pay benefits, chances of promotion, etc. The factors affecting other people, your colleagues, your students, your parents and guardians, and the factors affecting the teaching profession, example, training, terms of service, your perks, lack of trained and experienced teachers for specific subjects, and the factors affecting the community and country at large, schools, training for untrained teachers decline in the standard of education. There will be challenges in whatever profession we take up as the grass may not always be greener on the other side. Look at the benefit of finishing strong. Keep going with the will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield, as mentioned by Alfred Tennyson in his poem. Finally, as teachers, we need to be reminded of our moral imperative in the teaching profession, following the calling of God because teachers touch the future, and we make the difference. So teachers, please don't go. Our students need you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Cikgu Maria. Uh, you are the living example of a lifelong learner because uh, you received your PhD while serving as a deputy minister. I can remember that. And uh, one question for, for you first uh, from uh, Professor Sheila. Uh, could, where could uh, where could you uh, I get the leadership book uh, for, that you have written? No, no, not this question. Uh, uh, this is to that uh, uh, Mary up asking where can she get the book, oh. the leadership book that you have written. Oh, I see. Thank you very much for showing interest in um, my book. In fact, it has gone into the second edition and then uh, it stopped uh, circulation. I finished, uh, well, the books have all been sold out. But I could um, discuss with Prof Xiao uh, how to get you a copy if you would give me, um, give us your address or point of contact so that we can look into that. Thank you very much for. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mary. Uh, these questions, uh, there are two remaining questions. Uh, I would like to pose this que the first question from uh, Syed, uh, Mr. Said Rabia uh, to Chegu Prem first, huh? because the last the Chegu uh, uh, Khalifa shall answer two questions after that. So the first question uh, is: Teachers are mothers at school; they are also fathers. Do you think due to COVID-19 e-learning has reduced the physical face-to-face -face guidance of teachers? Okay, uh, thank you. Over to you, Chegu Prem. Thank you, Prof. Uh, thank you, Ms. Shade Rabia. Okay, um, I would like to say that um, it's, it's reduced the face-to-face -face guidance uh, of teachers. Yes, but it's during the, the pandemic time. Not now, actually, because even though during the pandemic time, the teachers uh, gain their effort to to give the best. They try their best to give the best to the students so that each and every student get uh, lessons uh, fully and uh, they didn't uh, neglect it from the uh, education, you know. Um, so now we are back to the endemic uh, time and uh, I thought the face-to-face -face guidance is... Uh, uh, getting better and the students uh, keep on uh, back to their schools and back to their lessons and back to their experience uh, exper I mean the back to the school environment so uh, after this uh, things will get back as normal thank you thank you uh, what about you Chegu Khalifa yep um like it or not Definitely e-learning, uh, especially during the COVID-19, has reduced face-to-face uh, -face interactions or guidance. But then rather than challenge, uh, we I would like to look at it as an opportunity for teacher to diversify their, their teaching method or their teaching plan. Because now they, they can opt for uh, recording, of, recording of their teaching. Um, to guide the students other than maybe they are not that uh, good in, in teaching face-to-face. -face. I mean, um, maybe they, they are recording, uh, the recording of themselves is better in explaining certain, certain syllabus or certain methods um, during the learning, the, the teaching and learning process. So I think it is an opportunity for, uh, for teachers especially to to, to make use of the technologies nowadays um, to become more creative in their teaching. The second question is from um, Prof. Uh, Sheila Cheng, who has asked, who has asked you uh, when you yep. brought your students to Korea, were they self-sponsored or sponsored by your college? Mm, there were two times that I brought my students to Korea during 2018 for the robot IRC International Robot Contest, it was uh, almost fully sponsored by several associations and sponsored. So they sponsored flight tickets, they, uh, the college itself sponsored the robot kits uh, to be brought to the competition and several other sponsors, they sponsored us uh, the, the fee to stay there, I mean, all, all the lodgings and food. And the students come up with their own pocket money uh, to for souvenir of the for the field trip there and for 2019 uh, when i brought what, 20 students uh, 15 students to south korea uh, for a gaja korea program that one um, they they brought themselves uh, their flight tickets and lodging the rest of them are sponsored by institutions in south korea when they were there for example when we went to uh, ion polit uh, seoul Seoul Polytechnic, so uh, the transport, uh, the, the lunch there, uh, they provided. And when we uh, joined a program by Funday Korea Network, they sponsored uh, the lunch there. So during the eight days, we have several sponsors uh, from the South Korea, and the rest comes from their own pocket money and several sponsors from Malaysia. Hmm. Okay, uh, one last question to you also, Chegu Khalid. Uh, where can we buy Onyo Hoseyo? Oh, the, an the Anya Hoseyo book. The Anya Hoseyo book. Um, you can PM me. I mean, you can contact me through Facebook 
a Kedinga Vocational College fan page. You can contact it through there. And those who are interested to buy the books, you can leave your point of contact over there. And then I will get back to you because I am also one of the admins for the uh, Kedinga Vocational College fan page. Okay, Cikgu Oilan. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And we have now reached to the uh, conclusion of the uh, webinar. And uh, well, as uh, if I can summarize, that the uh, teaching profession, just like any other professions, uh, have ups and downs. So uh, as Dr. Chigumeri has mentioned, please uh, be more patient, have more perseverance to stay on in this uh, noble profession. And then uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, three speakers have shared the uh, sweet memories that you have uh, experienced during your, your journey. And uh, uh, well, if I can summarize on the part of uh, Asia E University, especially during COVID-19, is that we were not, we were unperturbed because we have uh, all the while using digital form of learning. And uh, and in fact, uh, it saved us a lot of uh, costs. And um, and uh, on for these two uh, teachers, Chegu Khalifa, Chegu Prem, uh, I would like to offer you uh, opportunity to study at Asia E University for your uh, high degree, and uh, and uh, and also thank to my uh, Chigumeri. Mary. She she wants me to call her Chigumeri, but uh, every time the slip of my tongue will call her that to Doctor Mary. <laughs> I'm a Chigumeri. I'm a Chigumeri. No matter what. <laughs> okay, so I would like to thank that uh, Doctor Mary, Chigumeri, and uh, Chigu Prem and Chegu Khalifa for your time and also uh, sharing such an inspiring uh, uh, thought on you, on to, to our audience. And uh, also to our audience who have stayed along and posed some questions uh, and uh, would like to, as I said, summarize the uh, theme for today, Teachers Day for Malaysia is to teach us a pillars of the success, uh, school success. And uh, the uh, unprecedented uh, COVID-19 uh, have, uh, have shown the, uh, the no, has inspired the uh, UNESCO to give the World Teachers' Day team as uh, teachers at the heart of, uh, of uh, recovery and uh, and uh, I would like to thank the unsung heroes, the heroines, the teachers who had gone through the COVID and uh, and uh, be with the student as what uh, Prof. Uh, Prem has mentioned that uh, we have sacrificed, uh, as teachers have sacrificed a lot of our time and uh, effort. So with that, congratulations to you all celebrating the uh, Teachers' Day. And uh, happy Teachers Day to you all. Uh, and uh, thank you to my uh, technical team, Pro, uh, Mr. Andre and also uh, Hafsa and Ms. Walili. And uh, uh, we will meet again with uh, the subsequent uh, webinar. So let's post uh, the photograph for this session. Uh, Ms. Uh, anyone taking the photograph? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Andre? Okay. Uh. okay, stand by. Okay, then, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andre, you. and thank you. See you again. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Happy Teacher's nice day. day. Yeah. Happy Teacher's yeah. Day. Yeah. Yes, Happy Teacher's Day. Happy Teacher's Day.